Hello friends, Frequent Game Ruiner here bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy, and in this video I'm going to be covering 5 options that I think everybody should have on in Dota. Option number 1, and this is something you can find in Options, Advanced Options, and then in the bottom right here we can see Strict Solo Matchmaking. The reason that you would want to enable this is because it essentially makes it so that you cannot queue into party stacks when you are playing solo MMR, and the reason that this is so important is because the way that you gain MMR is not by having a 100% win rate, it's by having like a 52% win rate, it's about playing a over a long period of time and winning a little bit more than you lose. So essentially it's about being consistent, and the problem with queuing into party stacks is that's very inconsistent because certain party stacks give a fuck about party MMR, certain party stacks don't. So essentially, if you're queuing into parties, you are allowing the outcome of the game to be determined by just the randomness of the matchmaking, which is a horrible problem if you're trying to consistently win solo MMR. Option number two, and this is actually a set of options I would recommend you turn off because they are essentially just aesthetic and don't do anything other than potentially fuck you over. Uh, so the first option is under camera in the basic options, and you should turn off center camera on hero respawn. The amount of times I've seen somebody cancel a TP because they accidentally TP'd to the fountain because they had their camera somewhere waiting to respawn and they were going to TP there immediately, but then the camera goes back to base, so they just press their button in the fountain and they TP to fountain and then they have to walk somewhere anyway. Like, it's, it, it literally just, I've only seen this fuck people over, and if you want to move your camera to your hero on respawn, you can just do it manually and it's the exact same thing, except it's not forced in every game. Uh, and then in advanced options, I would go under camera and turn off screen shake because this just moves the camera around on certain spells and once again it's purely aesthetic it just fucks up your positioning of your camera and distracts you and then over in miscellaneous i would turn off the camera color shift when dead because it makes the uh, camera go gray when you're dead i don't know why but in the options like the default options there seems to be this focus on like when you're dead it doesn't matter if you pay attention which is just complete bullshit like moving your camera to your respawn as if there's not information that is more important than your hero to be looking at at that time like it, it's actually just total bullshit in dota like being dead you could buy back you could be looking at information for your team where you're gonna go next how the map is progressing like if you stop paying attention when you're dead you're gonna be dead very quickly after respawning uh, and then the, the fourth option that I recommend turning off is actually in hotkeys and then in advanced hotkeys and you will have a showcase view uh, option that will be bound to like I or something like that and if you accidentally press it in a game it can get you killed because it puts the camera really close to your hero in this stupid mode and it's hard to get out of and it, it does nothing other than like allow you to take fancy looking screenshots and shit like that so just turn that off don't have that on if you want to use showcase mode you can click the button on the hero icon uh, and it's the exact same thing except not bound to something where you're accidentally going to press it. Option number three, and I feel very passionately about this one and would urge you to test this out on a lot of heroes. There's a lot of stuff that you can't do in Dota if you don't have these options on. Uh, but teleport requires stop. This is in the basic options and channeled abilities require hold and stop. And the reason that this is so important is because this enables you to do more with shift queuing. And obviously on certain shift queue heroes like Sand King, for example, shift queuing is incredibly important and having more options to do stuff with it is going to be very important as well. So uh, the, the most common reason people turn this option on is so when they TP in, they can't accidentally cancel a TP like that. Um, a lot of the time people will try to blink after TP and they, they just try to like, they try to like time it, you know, they're like, oh, okay, I'll get this. Oh, I fucked up because you're not a robot. So it's very, very hard to do this. Uh, so that, that's why people would shift queue. But the issue with shift queuing is that if you TP like this and then you shift queue like this, what if this location that I targeted my blink and my burrow strike is no longer a good location for that blink burrow strike? What do I do? How do I... Uh, erase that shift queue while still having the TP go off. You actually can't. You, you, you have the choice of either pressing S or issuing a new command, which will interrupt the TP as well and stop the shift queue, or you have the, the option to just go with that shift queue as well. Like, you literally have two shitty choices. So, uh, like, I'll, I'll, I can show you. So you can, so let's say I do this. I can stop it by doing that. That stops it. But the issue with that is that when you issue a command, uh, it erases the entire shift queue, the entire queue of abilities that you're going to do otherwise. So that includes the teleport, and that's a problem. Uh, however, if you have this option on, uh, which is teleport requires stop and channel abilities require require stop, then 
All you need to do is TP in. So let's say I shift Q this, you can see the Q, and then I want to blink here instead. All you need to do is issue that blink command, and what that's going to do is it's going to replace every command in that list with the new blink command, except because we have the option on, it doesn't replace the channel. So the reason this is important for more than just TPs is because let's say I'm epicentering in the trees here and I want to blink into here, but let's say the fight's happening here, but then as I channel the epicenter, an important hero shows up over here, so I want to uh, use the, the burrow strike on, on this hero. So I'm channeling Epi, and I shift Q over here, but then I see this hero, and then I burrow them. So you can see that I shift Q'd here, but I was able to interrupt it and change my action and go over here on this hero. And uh, so, like, we'll do it again. Simple as that. Like, you literally just issue you just issue another command. I didn't do blink, but you can understand that I issued a, a, a burrow strike command, and that interrupted the shift Q. But it interrupted everything in the shift Q, minus the channeled ability, minus the TP. And it's not just Sand King, like I said, there's so much to this that you can do that you couldn't otherwise do because of shift queuing just being so important to Dota. It's not just Sand King, it's like basically every hero to some degree, especially because, of course, every hero carries a TP scroll. So I would urge you to test this out and, and try with a lot of other heroes because there's a lot of shit that you cannot do without these options on. Option number four, and this is something that helps map awareness a lot. Go into your minimap settings and basic options and then turn on invert alt toggle so we can see the hero icons instead of just the colors. So one issue with this that I'm absolutely aware of for anybody that's going to comment this is that you cannot see in one single frame the uh, facing direction of heroes if you have this set setting on because it always shows their hero icons as just their face facing perfectly upright. Um, so you would actually, in order to see which direction they're facing, instead of just looking at this and looking at the arrow, you have to essentially look and to see where they're moving. But that's perfectly okay because the amount of times that I've seen people know somebody is in a location, but they don't know what hero it was because it was such a brief moment that they didn't quite catch the color or they have to go check the color. Like the amount of time wasted where people are like, oh, I saw blue here and nobody knows who blue is. Like it's it's very, very bad as opposed to knowing what the actual hero is, especially if, if you're just on your own uh, and, and, and you know, you see a, a glimpse of a hero and you need, you know that you need to get out because that's like a Kunkka. That's a Kunkka ganking you. If that's, you know, a Crystal Maiden who gives a fuck, but if that's a Kunkka, you have to run away. But let's say you have the colors on and you see a Crystal Maiden, you're not going to know what hero that is in, in a fraction of a second, so you're going to run away from a CM, which is very bad, <laughs> because who cares about a CM? So essentially, you want to turn on this invert alt toggle. It is absolutely worth having to look for a, a little bit longer to see the di direction the heroes are facing. And then also, I'd recommend uh, turning the minimap hero size from anywhere between 125% to uh, probably like 175%. My personal opinion is that 200% is large, and that's going to give you very, very good map awareness. In other words, like you're going to know uh, if a hero is in a location instantaneously, because even if you're looking directly at your screen, you will see in your peripheral, oh, that's a Kunkka, he's ganking me. Like, it will be good for map awareness, but my problem with having it at 200% is just the fact that you can't see if heroes are on low ground or high ground. So this axe here, for example, it's hard to tell at 200% where he actually is, uh, whereas on like 165% or anywhere between 125% and 175%, you can get a pretty good idea of whether a hero is on a low ground or on a high ground. Option number five, and this is actually a set of options as well, but ones that I would recommend you turn on if they're not on by default. I'm not 100% sure if they're on by default or not right now, but I would hope they are because they're very crucial options. But uh, over in the basic options, interface options, holding alt shows neutral spawn boxes. Uh, if you don't have this on, it's almost impossible to block or deward camps without just remembering every single spawn box. Uh, which, with how much they change, this is almost impossible, so you're losing out if you don't have this on. Uh, holding Alt shows tower attack range. This is something that can be abused so that you can see the uh, tower true sight, which is a little bit smaller than the attack range. You just hold Alt and then move a little bit closer. Uh, it'll let you know if you're safe in the tower range. It'll let you know if you're going to get attacked, auto-attacked by an enemy tower. It's quite important to have this on and I, I think the one that's not on by default is this option show ability range finder while casting and this is a more of a quality of life thing but it's it's such a quality of life improvement for heroes like pudge any hero that has the, this kind of like long ability where you're not 100% sure on what the range is when you're when you're you know playing in a game of dota uh, but it shows this green bar that will stay green and it will be uh, transparent if you move out of the range more transparent if you move out of the range of the spell so you can know without having to hover over like this whether or not the hero is actually in range to cast a spell because if you cast a spell and you're out of range like you're gonna issue a command that's gonna make you do some stupid shit like this 
like like maybe I didn't want to walk over here. Maybe I'm walking into a black hole or something like that. You know, it's uh, just definitely an issue. So this just gives you more information without having to uh, issue any new commands, like you know, moving your mouse all the way down here and then hovering over this for a period of time to give you the ability to process. Okay, that's how far the hook range is. You can just do this. Okay, that's the range because the bar is going transparent, and that is incredibly strong. And people would use this before it was even an option. They'd go into the console and they'd turn it on because it's just that good. So that's it for this video. There are a lot of options that I did want to cover. I wanted to do like 15 of them or something like that that I think are very important to learn at some point. But number one, I didn't want to make like a 40 minute video because a lot less people would watch that just due to the watch time. And then uh, number two, uh, I do genuinely believe that it's not good to like overwhelm yourself with changing a bunch of things all at once in Dota because then it's going to feel so bad and overwhelming that you're just going to go back to your original options. So essentially, like if there's one or two options in this list that you didn't have on, uh, it will be worthwhile to just try putting on one of them, play for a couple weeks, test it out, get a feel for it, and then once it's instinctive, then you can add on other options. And maybe if you guys want me to, I'll make uh, another video involving five more options next week and then you can kind of move on to those but make sure to comment below whether whether or not you want to see a video like this again because uh it's uh you know experimental and so forth but in any case thank you for watching i do appreciate it and i hope to see you in another video